Hey, this is piece 54, the Virgin Theotokos and Child between Saints Theodore and George. This is Theodore and this is George. This is made of encaustic on wood. Encaustic is a wax and it's difficult to have this wax show so much detail. So it's a very impressive piece that way. Um, its function is that it is an icon and so it's meant to be a pathway to something bigger, like an icon on a screen. This is a nun who's making another icon. Here's an icon that's for sale on eBay. And here's an icon that can be found in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The context for this icon piece is that it is from the Byzantine Empire. And remember, here is Justinian, and this a mosaic is from the Church of San Vitale in northern Italy. And we see that Justinian is the leader of the church and the country. So it's a non-secular empire where lots of icons would be made. So um, there was a time period in the Byzantine Empire when there was a debate about whether or not there should be icons. And this was a time then where some people destroyed icons, and that's called iconoclasm. And this piece, because it was made pretty far away, it was right over here in the, by Egypt, um, it was further, far enough removed from the Byzantine Empire here that it didn't get destroyed. It was made in, um, as I say, the Sinai Peninsula or the Byzant Egypt area um, in this monastery. And um, so it's been preserved. The form of it is just like most Byzantine work. It is three Fs and a G, flat, frontal, floating, and gold. So here is Empress Theodora showing us flat, frontal, floating, and gold. You can see here that these Theodore and George, their feet are at 45 degrees angle, angle so we know they're kind of floating. And most of the of these people in this piece are frontal um, and gold, of course. But this is a transitional piece between the Mediterranean world, the Greek and Romans, and the Byzantine world. So let's look at how it kind of varies from that three Fs and a G. Although in an essay, I would certainly describe it that way as three Fs and a G, but it's also got these other aspects to it. It's a much better rendition. Um, so, for example, the two angels are not quite frontal. Their heads are looking up. Mary's throne is not quite frontal. You can kind of see more of this right uh, armrest. And so it's a little bit at an angle and it's foreshortened. So we can kind of see more depth there. And then Mary's legs. Do you see that this one is higher than this one, this knee? So we can kind of see that she's in transition. This foot is more forward. So it's like she's almost ready to kind of get up out of the chair. And then architecturally, so we got it. That means we've got movement like the Greek and Roman stuff. And then architecturally, remember the um, house of Vetti at Pompeii where there were these panels of architectural architecture, you know, in the frescoes. So that exists here still. Content. We have this whole hierarchy going on in content. I don't know if you can see it very well, but notice here, th this is God's hand kind of coming down from the ceiling. Um, kind of, and that would be the closest to like the peak of this religious piece, um, the peak being heaven and God. And then one step below heaven and God are these angels who have these translucent halos. 
And so that means they're not they're not really 100% down on earth. They are more in transition to the heavens. So they're closest to God. Then the next level down, we'd have Mary and we can see her halo is bigger. And really she's kind of the, sub, she is the subject. She and her, her baby are the subject of this piece. Um, but in, they're the, they're the third level in terms of closeness to God that, but they're also may, you know, human. So they are related to the earth and are earthly. And then of course, the most closest to us are these saints, and this is Theodore and George. More content is, um, and this is kind of form too, but it's who's who, where is everybody looking? Well, the two saints are looking straight out at us. Of course, they're the most earth centered. And then we have Mary and the baby Jesus. Well, Mary has known since she con conceived um, J baby Jesus or was given baby Jesus by God um, that he was not meant long for this earth. And so her eyes are looking toward kind of another place. It's like she understands what's going to happen to her baby. And she does. And then uh, Jesus is also, I know it's hard to see here. Let's see if we can see it better here. No, I kind of, he's kind of looking off in this direction also. He's not really looking toward us um, as he also knows there's something else going on, the future of his cr crucifixion. And then um, the angels are looking up. And what also is happening here in context is that the light of God is shining down on Mary, you know, the mother of Jesus. And um, she, so this is kind of indicating to us, this is, these are who we're really meditating toward in this icon. And Mary is the vehicle for us to communicate through to Jesus and thence to God. So the light shines on her. And then final content is that St. George was a Roman soldier. Uh, the story goes who was tortured, decapitated because he um, refused to recant Christianity. And this happened to him in 303. And he is always featured or mostly featured slaying a dragon. And so we hear of St. George's, the school. Well, right, they are, their mascot is the dragon. And the same is true with St. Theodore, that he also refused to recant Christianity, didn't want to participate in pagan worship. And so he was thrown into a furnace. So these two guys, these two saints are aptly by Mary's side and baby Jesus's side because they are protectors of the faith.